In this guide, we're going to learn how to set up an OAuth connection with the YouTube API. We're using PHP and the Google API PHP client. Doing this is going to give us the ability to write data via the API. So we'll be able to do things like edit a video's details or even upload videos. Now, if you're just joining us, this is part of a series. And in the previous parts of the series, we've been focusing mainly on just getting things set up and also doing some basic read queries where we're retrieving information from the API. So if you're new to working with the API, using PHP in the Google API PHP client, you're going to want to check out those videos. I have uh, links in the descriptions so you can dig into that. Uh, but if you're already comfortable with those tools and you just want to learn about setting up a OAuth connection, you're in the right place. So jumping in, the first thing we need to do is go over to the Google Cloud Console. There's a couple configuration things we need to do to get it set up uh, for establishing an OAuth connection. So within the console, first, I just want to make sure the appropriate project is selected in this dropdown. Demo is the project I created in previous videos for this example, so I'm all set there. And I'm going to go into APIs and Services. And then I want to find the option to configure my OAuth consent screen. The first settings you're going to be asked here is whether you want to create an internal or external application. Uh, if you're creating something that you want the general public to have access to, you want to choose external. If you were creating something that was only uh, available to, say, people in your company within your Google organization, you could choose internal. For this example, I'm going to go with external. So let's say create. And here's where we're going to get into the details of the consent screen. So the consent screen is just the screen that your users are going to see when they initiate the OAuth connection with the API. And there's an example of it on the right here. So going through here, we're going to fill out the details starting with the name of our application. Uh, in my case, I've just been calling everything demo, so I'll put that in there. Um, then we need to provide a support email address, and the options are going to default to whichever account you're logged in as and configuring all of this. So in my case, that's this codewithsusan at gmail.com address. All right, next up is the app logo. Uh, this is something that if I was getting this application to go out to the real world to be used in production, I would definitely want to upload a logo. Um, it's just going to add authenticity to the consent screen, make your users more likely to grant the permission. Uh, but because this is an example, I'm just going to skip past that for now. Same thing for all of this app domain information. None of this is required at this point, so uh, you can hold off on filling this out. Or if you have this information available, you could put this in now. Uh, coming down to authorized domains, this step is important because in a moment, as we continue in this configuration process, uh, we're going to be setting up what is referred to as a redirect URL. And this is the URL that the Google uh, OAuth server is going to redirect the user back to after granting permissions via this consent screen. And it's going to be important that that redirect URL that we specify matches a domain that we've uh, included here under authorized domains. Now, in my examples, I'm running everything through a local server that I have uh, running on my computer via the URL of demo.test. So that is the domain that I would be using, demo.test. However, if I go to add that domain, I'm going to have a problem. And I'll show that here. It's going to validate it. And it's going to say invalid domain must be a top private domain. So it's not happy with this .test extension. It doesn't see that as a real world domain. It's expecting something like .com, .net, whatever. So to get around this, I'm going to use a service called redirectme2.com, which allows you to tack on a URL to their URL. And all it's going to do is redirect you to whatever URL you tack on. All right, so in my case, ultimately, we want to be sending the user back to this demo.test URL. So if I take this, and just append it to the redirectme2 URL, like so, you can see it just redirects me to the destination that I specified. All right, so anticipating that for the authorized domain, rather than using my domain, I'm actually just going to specify the redirectme2.com domain. Now, of course, if you were working on a real world application that was already in production and you had a real world domain, you wouldn't be using the redirectme service. You would just want to specify that domain here. And you can see you can add multiple domains. So maybe anticipating I was eventually going to run this on my production server. Let's say I actually had this set up at demo.com. Um, I can include that as one of the authorized domains here as well. Uh, but I don't actually have that domain and I'm not going to be setting that up. So I'll just delete that for now. Moving on, the last thing it wants is a developer contact email. So I'll just fill in my email and then we'll save and go on to the next step, which is to specify the scopes, which are basically the permissions you're going to be requesting of the user as part of this OAuth consent process. So let's go to add or remove scopes and you should see a list of scopes that are available. 
Uh, in our case, I'm going to choose this Auth YouTube Manager YouTube account scope because the uh, first example we're going to look at with this OAuth connection is editing the details about a video via the API, and that's the scope we need to do that. But take a moment to skim through the other scopes that are available and check off the ones that are appropriate to what your application is going to need to do. Uh, but just a word of advice here, you only want to choose the minimum amount of scopes necessary for what you're going to need to do. Don't just go and check off all of the YouTube data API scopes, because when the user is going through the consent process, they're going to see that you're requesting access to do all of those things. And that might make them a little bit hesitant to uh, approve that connection and approve that access. So just request the access to the things that you actually need to do. All right, so in our case, that's what we're going to check, and we could always come back to this and edit these scopes later if we needed to. All right, so I think we're going to uh, wrap this up by clicking Update, and then down at the bottom, we'll say Save and Continue. And that brings us to test users. We're told here that while our publishing status of this application is set to testing, only test users are going to be able to access the app. Uh, so you want to go ahead and add your Google account that you're going to be testing with here. If you have any colleagues that are going to be testing, you would want to include their emails as well. Um, in my case, it's just going to be my email. So I'll go ahead and add that and then save and continue. And that completes the process for setting up our OAuth consent screen. So the next thing we want to do is go over to credentials. We're going to create a new set of credentials. Uh, previously, we had created an API key, but now we want to create an OAuth client ID. It's going to ask for our application type. Um, in this example, we're creating a web application. Then it asks us to name our client. Uh, this is only going to identify the client in the console. It will not be shown to end user, so I'm just going to leave it as the default. And then scrolling down under authorized JavaScript origins, we're not doing anything in terms of JavaScript connections, so I'm going to skip that step. I'm going to go on to authorized redirect URIs. Uh, and this goes uh, back to what we were talking about with the OAuth consent screen. We were talking about that redirect URL. Um, as I mentioned, when the user approves the OAuth connection, the Google OAuth server is going to redirect back to our site, and we need to indicate which URL to redirect back to at this point. So I'm going to say add URL, or actually they're calling it a URI here, but effectively the same thing. And I'm going to specify that redirectme2.com URL with my local domain after it. And of course, as discussed earlier, if I was dealing with my production site at this point, I could add a URL for that. So just hypothetically, that would be like uh, demo.com or whatever I had registered. Now, I do want to point out at this point that all of the examples I'm showing, I'm just running them from the root of my application, right? It's just demo.test. That's where I've been writing my code. And that's what I'm going to use for my redirect URL. But it's possible you have separate routes or pages in which you're dealing with this YouTube connection. So maybe you have something like a route like YouTube. Right. If that's the URL where you're setting things up and where you want Google to redirect back to, make sure you're including that as part of uh, your redirect URI here. All right, so proceeding forward, let's say create. And you can see our credentials were created. We're going to go ahead and download them as a JSON file. Uh, we're going to be using these in our application. So I'm going to go over to my downloads folder, find that file. I'm just going to rename it youtube.json. And then I want to move this in with the rest of my code base so I'll have access to it. So let me uh, pull up my code editor. I've got my project open. I'm just going to drag and drop that in there. And with that, that's the last thing we need to do, uh, for right now at least, within the Google Cloud Console. So at this point, we want to switch gears and set up the code that's going to establish this OAuth connection. So to expedite that process, I'm going to go over to the notes that accompany this video and scroll all the way down past the instructions of everything we just did. And we want to get down to the code, which you'll see under this heading called the code. <laughs> and we'll just go ahead and copy that and then bring it into our working file. So in my case, I've just been working in my index file and I'm going to paste that in. And before I walk through and explain what this code is doing and how you can customize it for your own use, uh, let's just see what the process looks like. So going back to the browser, I'm going to go back to my uh, demo test page and refresh it. And you can see it says our current status is we're not authorized. So we're going to attempt to authorize with YouTube. This is going to send us over to the Google uh, server where we're going to go through that consent screen process. Uh, the first thing it does is tells me to choose an account I want to um, basically consent with. I want to make sure I choose an account that matches one of the test users I added when setting things up. So I'm going to use my code with Susan at gmail.com address. 
Now, when you're in testing, you're going to see this message saying that Google hasn't verified this app yet. Uh, so we're just going to bypass that for right now. We're just going to say continue. This leads us to the permissions screens where you can see any of the scopes that we had selected when configuring things are listed here. So the user sees that they're going to be granting access to manage your YouTube account. And we'll say continue. All right, and at that point, it redirected us back to our redirect URL. We can ignore this pop-up. This is just my password manager. And you can see now that it shows that we are authorized. And that's our goal in this video is just getting that flow set up of going to the Google OAuth servers, granting that permission, getting redirected back and seeing that we are authorized. So now that we understand what that flow looks like, let's take a closer look at the code. We are building on the foundation we set up in the previous videos where we're working with a Google API PHP client. So we've got our composer auto loading file uh, set up that's gonna give us access to that package. We have got a use statement for the client class within that package that we're gonna be using. All right, so that's all standard stuff we've already talked about. Um, here's where it's a little different. We have a variable called the redirect URL and uh, you wanna set this to whatever redirect URL you had set up in the previous steps when we were working in the cloud console. So in my case, that's redirectme2.com followed by the URL in which this page is operating. All right, then we create a new instance of our Google client. And then with that instance, we can invoke a method called setAuthConfig and pass it the path to that youtube.json file we had pulled in a moment ago. So that's where it's gonna read our credentials from. Uh, next, we need to register our redirect URI using the set redirect URI method and just pass it the variable we had indicated above with our redirect URI or URL as I'm calling it. And then finally, uh, in terms of initializing things, we wanna uh, add the scope for the permissions we're gonna be requesting. And this should match whatever scopes you had selected when we were working in the cloud console. And you can see the pattern for uh, listing these. You're just gonna take the googleapis.com URL and then append on the scope that you're using. And I'll include a chart on the screen with all the scopes that are available. All right, so that's our initialization. And then there's several different scenarios we're gonna be handling in this page. Uh, scenario one is we just come to the page, we are not yet authorized and we wanna prepare for authorization. Uh, in that case, the key thing we're gonna be doing is we need to generate the auth URL. This is the link that the user is gonna follow to begin the authorization process. Uh, scenario two is when we're gonna be completing the authorization. This is gonna happen when the Google servers redirects back to us. This is the code that's gonna handle that process where we're gonna actually get our access token for that authorization. Scenario three is we're already authorized. In other words, we've already gone through that consent screen process. We already have that token stored in our session. We're basically just gonna be recognizing that within our code. And at this point we could uh, use that authorization. Um, and that's effectively where we are right now. If we go back to our demo, we are currently authorized. So when I load this page, this scenario three is the code that's being executed. Um, scenario four is we have an option to terminate our authorization. And that would happen if I were to click this disconnect link. All right, now that's a broad overview of our different scenarios. Let's rewind now and talk a little bit more detail about each of them, starting with the prepare for authorization. Now we know we're at this step when two conditions are true. The first condition is that we don't have a query string called code. Um, and the reason we're looking for that is if we look at scenario two, that's where we are gonna have a code query string because when we get redirected back to from the Google OAuth servers, it's gonna be including a special authorization code as part of the query string. So that's our flag for scenario two. And if we don't see that, well then we're potentially here in scenario one, assuming this other condition is true, where within our session, this Google OAuth token is empty. Right, now the Google Auth token is something that is set down here in scenario two when we're completing the authorization. So if that doesn't exist, it means we haven't previously been authorized. And like I said, if we don't have this code, we know we're not completing the authorization. So we're basically starting off uh, at the very beginning here. And what needs to happen at this uh, point is first we need to generate a code verifier. This is gonna be a special code that's gonna be sent when we are requesting authorization and later when we're getting our access token, we're gonna to use this code. So to generate this, all we're gonna do is we're gonna reference that client object that we created up here above. We're gonna invoke the get oauth to service method and then the generate code verifier method. That's gonna give us our code. We're gonna store it in the session under this index called code verifier. And like I said, we'll use that later. You'll see that in a moment. 
right? After that, we need to know the auth URL. Where does the user need to go to begin the authorization process? We're going to get that from our client object. We're going to invoke this method called create auth URL. All right, and then I've got this variable called connected. It's a flag I'm using down below in my output. At this point, we know we're not connected, so I'm setting it to be false. And let's actually scroll down to that output so we can see this. So here's my output. Just got a heading on the page. Uh, we're indicating the status and we're looking at that connected variable. If it's true, we're going to let the user know they're authorized and give them a link to disconnect. Otherwise, if it's false, we're going to say not authorized. And here's where we're going to output a link to that auth URL that we were just looking at that we generated. All right, let's, um, let's get back to that scenario. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click the disconnect. I'll talk in a moment about how that's working, but this is scenario one. We are not connected, so we see output indicating that. And then we've got our auth URL link that we can click on. Um, and if you look down at the status bar, you can see the URL that was generated for auth URL. All right, if we click on that, it's going to begin the authorization process. All right, and that's what's going to lead us to step two. Right, so going back to, or scenario two, I should call it. Scenario two is where we're going to complete authorization because when the user clicks that link, it's going to send them over to the Google OAuth servers. They're going to see those consent screens. And then after they approve it, Google is going to redirect them back to the redirect URL that we specified. And as part of that, in the query string, it's going to include the special code parameter. Now, once we detect that, we want to take that code and we're going to invoke on our client this method called fetch access token with auth code. We're going to pass it that code as well as the code verifier that we had generated in the first step and stored in our session. With those two things, we're going to get back a token. Then with the client object, we're going to uh, invoke a method called set access token, where we're just going to register that token. And then the final thing we need to do is we want to store that token in our session. This is what's going to make it so that when we come back to the site, it's going to remember that we're already authorized. It's going to have access to that token. And that's actually what's going to lead to scenario three. And in fact, to get to that scenario, the last thing we do here where we're completing the authorization is we're just going to redirect the user back to this page. Uh, but we're not going to have the code at that point. We will have our token within the session. So the next time we come back from this redirect, we're going to trigger this if statement where it's going to see that our session for that Google OAuth token is not empty. And seeing that, it gets us into this if statement. And with our client object, we're going to again invoke that set access token, um, pulling the token from the session. All right, and at that point, this client object is basically authenticated. So we could start to perform API actions with that client object. Um, not something we're doing in this video. This video is just about setting up and authenticating that client. But in the next video, you're going to see how we're going to be getting that token, uh, essentially registering it with the client, and then being able to perform our API write actions. Now, looking at the rest of the code that's happening within this if branch, we do check and make sure that the token isn't expired. Obviously, in this situation where we're just authenticating, it's not going to be. But if the user had previously authenticated on our site and they come back, we just want to make sure that that token is still valid. Now, the final scenario is our disconnect scenario where we want to terminate our authorization. Uh, and the way we do that is just basically clearing our session variables. We want to take the Google Auth token session, set it to null. And then we can also take that code verifier and set it to null. That will basically make our browser forget that we ever had a connection. And then after doing that, it just sends the user back to the page. Um, now, the way we trigger this scenario, if we look at my disconnect link, I'm just linking to the current page with this query string of disconnect um, attached to it. And then we're looking for that in our get super global. So if we detect that, this is the code that we're going to execute. And with that, that covers all four scenarios that this page has to handle when it comes to setting up this OAuth connection. Um, and like I said, it's not really doing anything interesting with that connection yet. So definitely check out the next video in the series. Now that we have this connection set up, we're going to see an example of editing a video's details uh, on YouTube via the API.